The Houston Rockets had statistically one of their best seasons ever, winning 65 games with a top 10 offensive rating in NBA history. They made the trade for one of the game's best point guards and paired him with one of the game's best scorers. A lot of naysayers didn't think two ball-dominant guards could coexist. CP3 and James Harden proved a lot of people wrong, as the Rockets had the best record in the league, and James Harden was crowned league MVP, which had eluded him for the past two seasons. The Rockets had the defending champs on the ropes as they took a 3-2 series lead against the Warriors. But unfortunately, Chris Paul wasn't able to play the last two games because of a hamstring injury. The Warriors finished them off in seven games as the Rockets are left to wonder what could have been. The Rockets could have made their first NBA Finals appearance since 1995. That disappointment will only fuel them to come back stronger next season. Usually Mike D'Antoni teams have only been known for their offense, but last year, the Houston Rockets not only had one of the best offenses, but also had a great defense as well. Houston had the sixth best defensive rating last season. James Harden has had two magnificent seasons in a row. Although his rebounds and assists dropped a little bit from the previous season, he increased his efficiency across the board and still led the league in scoring. Some people may feel he didn't deserve the MVP, but you can't deny how important James Harden was to the Houston Rockets. He led a team to an NBA best 65 wins while his running mate Chris Paul missed 20 plus games. Harden is the only player in NBA history to have a 60 point triple double. You just can't deny how good this guy is. Chris Paul provided leadership and his usual all around production. He played in 58 games and proved that he's still an all star level player when on the court. The Houston Rockets had a lot of key players becoming free agents this offseason, which were CP3, Clint Capella, and Trevor Ariza. The Rockets were able to sign the two most important free agents in Paul and Capella, but Trevor Ariza's two-way production will be missed, but I believe people are overrating his impact. He still is a good player, but I believe players like Gerald Green and PJ Tucker can make up for his loss. I believe Gerald Green alone can give you the same impact on both sides of the court with also bringing more versatility on offense. He shot around the same percentage from three as Ariza did. And Gerald Green obviously provides more athleticism. This is Green's chance to step up and be the full-time starter he should be. It took a while for the team and Clint Capella to agree on a contract this offseason. But getting it done was the most important thing. The Rockets could not afford to lose Capella. He ended up signing a five-year, $90 million contract this offseason. He helped anchor their great defense while rebounding and leading the league in field goal percentage. He might only score off lobs, dives to the rim, and putbacks, but he knows his role and doesn't demand touches. The last two years for Eric Gordon has been the healthiest two years since his first two in the league. He didn't win sixth man of the year last season, but his production and impact was about the same as when he won the award in 2017. He can be streaky at times, but he still shoots the three ball at a good clip. I could see Gordon getting more minutes this season as the Rockets try to manage Chris Paul's minutes going forward. But the news that got the most headlines this offseason, good and bad, was the signing of Carmelo Anthony. This was a good risk for the Rockets to take. It did work in OKC, everybody knows that. But I believe Melo will be a better fit with the Rockets and OKC will be a better team without him. Playing with Chris Paul is totally different than playing with Russell Westbrook. Playing in this system with good playmakers could bring the best out of Melo. I've always wanted Carmelo to play with a point guard like Chris Paul, someone who has a pass first mentality but could also score when he needed to. Melo needs that steady point guard who provides great leadership. Melo's most successful season is when he played with Chauncey Billups in Denver when they reached the Western Conference Finals. Another great point guard who brought great leadership and who could also put players in the best position to succeed. Not saying that Westbrook was the problem, but he has a scorer's mentality, which makes it difficult for certain players to find their rhythm night in and night out. I could see the Rockets bringing Melo off the bench 
as he could provide an instant scoring punch alongside Eric Gordon. But I could see Dan Tony put Melo in the starting lineup also. Nothing is really clear as of right now. But what needs to be clear is Melo's willingness to accept either role and play it to the best of his abilities. The Rockets may not win as many games as they did last year, but they need to get the number one seed to give themselves the best chance to beat Golden State. If healthy, I believe the Rockets have as good a chance as they did last year to play in the NBA Finals.